Hi, in today's video we're looking at the Milwaukee Portable Vacuum Cleaner model number M18CV uh, I purchased this off eBay again, so faulty spares or repair um, just completely dead, put a new battery in fully charged and absolutely nothing so we'll start taking it apart We'll see if we can uh, figure out what's wrong with it, and we'll see if we can fix it. So, I think firstly I'm going to remove this top cover. See if that lets it into the thing. So I'm going to remove these four screws around the outside first. And then the four inner screws. Well, there's the motor. Let's see if we can get this form out of the way, just for a better look at it. I'm just going to check to see if we've got any power going to the motor. So, meter in voltage DC. And there's no power to the motor, so. So just check um, see if there's any resistance on the water there. It's quite low, but I would expect that probably with the motor. Um Just checking that the motor rotates freely. I can just see a little bit of it down the side there. And the motor seems to be turning free, freely, so just in case the motor was seized or anything, but that doesn't appear to be the case. Right, I suspect the problem is going to be further back then. handle comes apart in one piece or not whether you've actually got to take the whole body of the thing apart it looks like you might have to take the whole body of it apart which looks a bit of a pain all right i think we'll need me actually it's a smaller torx in there shall try a smaller one Let's 
smaller torque still on here. Yeah. And the larger one on the side. I have a feeling that there's going to be some kind of fuse in the handle. Because I would have thought there would be some protection between the battery and the switch. And because it's just a normal DC motor, there's not really going to be much in this, I would think. I think it's pretty much going to be a switch, a motor, and a battery connector. And that's probably be about it. But we shall see. Right, we've got another four screws to go. Right, have I missed any more screws? I don't think so. I think that's about it. I don't know what those two are for. That's it. Yeah, there's a little bit more to it than what I thought then. I see a small circuit board down here as well. And there's a couple of surface mount components on the battery connector. So. Right, so I need to move that screw. So what do we have here? Well, as far as I know, there's no speed control on this. I think it's just a simple off switch. That's what it looks like. Well, there's definitely a, a small microcontroller there. Unless... Yeah, I think I know what this is for. I have suspect it measures the voltage of the battery. And if that gets too low, it then stops the hoover from working, or well, the vacuum stops it from working, so it doesn't over-discharge the battery. I mean, I would have thought the battery will have circuit protection in to stop you from doing that in any of That's the only thing I can think that this would be for. Right. Okay, it's going to be a bit awkward to try and get this connected to the battery while we've, um... So, positive comes up here. Oh, it's round the back to that pin there so what I'll do is I'll just check what the power is getting from the battery terminal it actually goes underneath there
That's strange. Ah, hold on. I might actually go to that one. So if I press that and check if the switch is working. No, I don't seem to have any power going from. Any continuity between there and there. Yeah, so that goes to that point on the switch. Let's check this switch is working. Yes, the switch is working. Now, this chip here, when I've had a look at it, looks like a little microcontroller which switches these two MOSFETs which then switches the negative of the battery to the negative of the, uh, the motor so then the thing actually fires up so if I put the battery on and I just bridge the two pins, the two right hand pins on this uh, MOSFET which is the the source and the drain so basically they're, they're the two pins when the MOSFET gets fired get sort of joined together if I just short those out with my meter probe and then pull the switch. So the motor actually works, the switch is working, it's just something to do with this little protection board here. So we're going to have to delve into that a bit I think. I'll just unplug the battery. Now the MOSFETs aren't shorted because if they were shorted, if they were blown, blown short anyway the thing would just work <laughs> um, and the fact that it's got two wires coming off the terminals here of the battery and I think one of them's the battery temperature if I'm right and I don't know whether one of them's a, a sense or something I'm not uh, I'm not a hundred percent on those I might see if I can find out a bit more information on the other pins on the battery but that's what it looks like it looks like this little circuit board's measuring things on these two pins here and then deciding whether to actually allow the motor to power on or not when the switch is pulled. Right, I've been testing a couple of these uh, transistors. I think they're actually, a couple of them are actually MOSFETs. And what I've found is, um, let's say if I measure this one here. I've got it on right side die or test. We're getting a reading about 4921 way and a high reading the other way, but on this one, we seem to be getting the same reading both ways. Now, I don't know whether there's a component somewhere in the circuit that's uh, that we're measuring when we're measuring that, but I think the only way to double check this is to actually take that component out and measure it. I've actually found an old um, circuit board off a TV here and there's actually got a couple of the same parts the same parts on this circuit board so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one off and swap it with uh, that one there and then we'll see if, uh, if that makes any difference so I'm going to bring the microscope in so we can see what we're doing And I'll swap the video over to the uh, over to the microscope view. And if I measure on the old one. If I measure that way, nothing, and that way, 264 still. 
So I'd say that component's gone. Right, so what we'll do is we'll get some flux. On here. We shall get the component and put it roughly in place. Like so. Now I'll bring the microscope in again. And hot air gun so you can see what's going on. Right then. Shall we see if it does anything new now then? Looks like that's it. Looks like that was that's what the problem was. Right then. We shall start reassembling it. Okay, so we have this screw holding that in place. Yeah, so all that's for a tiny little MOSFET. in here just to hold it for now. Just so it's not falling apart all over. Well, I'll try and get everything else put back on. Right. Put a 
screw in a bit first, I think. Well, I'm quite pleased with that. It was a fairly simple repair once I actually found out what the problem was. It's just a bit fiddly and you've got to have this proper equipment I suppose to be able to change stuff like little MOSFETs and, and whatever. Right, where was that screw from then? Sure, where that one was from. Well, just a few more screws to go in now. So a few to go in the front with this.
Nou, misschien nog wat scheurmissen. Nou, I'm just wondering by that. There was one already missing. Because I can't see around the bench anywhere. I was wondering if there was one missing already. Or whether I've dropped one somewhere. No, I can't see one. I have screws missing or screws left over. But I can't really remember taking one out of there. I'll have to have a look back on the video to see if I did or not. Hmm. Oh well. If it turns up, I'll put it in. And if not, I'll just uh, I'll just leave it. It's not going to really cause any harm anyway. So, right, we'll see if it works. See that's all working. Another successful fix. Well, if you like this video and you want to see more like it, please subscribe. And if you've got any comments, please leave them in the comments section below or any questions. And as always, have a great day. Thanks again.